Well, I've been busy working on my house here this uh, week. Um, these are the chimneys that I recreated. They're an inch and a quarter wide, and they're made out of a solid piece of wood with a piece of plywood on the top. And then the chimney pots I made out of broomsticks, as per uh, Kevin's suggestion. So um, I'll show you some other work that I did on my house today as well. Quite a lot happening. So I'm going to do something a little bit controversial. Um, as you can see, I'm completely finished all of my wallpapering. However, I am going to be keeping this dollhouse and I am going to be putting like furniture in it and to just leave it as just plain paper on the floor and the exterior of the house, I think is just kind of tempting fate. You can see I scuffed it a little bit right there. Oh, well, I think it's just kind of tempting fate. And after I seen that scuff, I realized I really should protect this paper. Not so much the wallpaper, but the floors and the exterior I'm kind of worried about. So um, when talking about it, uh, I was sort of thinking that an oil-based product would probably be the best, like just to put a kind of top coat over top of the floors. So I went and bought this uh, um, uh, semi-gloss uh, Verathane uh, product. And uh, yeah, it's a clear, uh, clear finish semi-gloss and it's an oil base. And I decided to just try it in one room. Thank goodness I only did it in one room because <laughs> you'll see what I did. Okay. And so I took this soft uh, bristle brush and I decide that I'm going to paint that on the floor of that particular room. And so I'm not pressing hard. I'm just putting one light coat of this varnish, this oil-based varnish over top of it. And uh, I start right in the middle of the room. Oops. <laughs> and look what happened. So it left a big streaky mess. So I decide, well... I'm going to leave it for two or three hours because that's how long it says uh, um, you should leave it and uh, see whether or not that lightens up. But uh, yeah, it does lighten up somewhat, but not enough that I'm ever going to trust it to do anything else with it. So, um, so instead, um, I went ahead and uh, I used a a water-based product on the breast of the house. So um, so you can see here, I'm just kind of showing you, I've got the coating done on the floors in the water-based stuff. And then I also did the roof in the water-based stuff. And again, that's like a, a semi-gloss. And uh, yeah, it's just providing, like, in my opinion, a really good sealant for it so that uh, it's not going to get damaged. And I also did my brick papers as well. So the product that I did end up using is uh, this stuff right here. So it's water-based and it's made by um, um, DecoArt and it's called uh, uh, Duro Clear Satin Varnish. And it's a polyurethane uh, satin varnish that is a water-based product. And I put it on with that little uh, sponge uh, paintbrush. So, um, yes, I feel like I'm only doing one coat. I'm not going to go over it a second time. I don't want to get too crazy with it. But I think it will provide um, the stability so that I can move things around. So I wanted to show you the various houses. So... This is Kevin's house that he's working on. As you can see, it's got the stucco on the front and the sides and then the brick paper on the front. His house is different from mine because it has the stucco on it and it also is supposed to have that brick paper. Here's Sheila, she's a internet friend. Hers has also got the stucco on the front and the sides and the brick paper. 
um, and uh, yeah, so that that brick paper is supposed to be on the house. Here's another example that Kevin found online where it's got the brick paper with the stucco on the front and the sides. So there's three examples of that particular house that we can find. And uh, all three of those examples have the stucco on them. And then another example like mine was sent by a friend and you can see the windows are brown. It's got the brick paper on the side like mine does and it's painted on the front, but the windows are done in brown. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of curious because I think my windows are supposed to be black. Here's uh, one that was sold in an auction house. Um, they're saying that it's a G and J Lines house, uh, number 37, uh, 1915, and definitely has a black base on it like mine, but it also has brown windows just like uh, Kevin did. This one here is the one that's on Dollhouse's past and present website. It's showing though as a number 13, which is curious, and they're saying it's 1901, 1902 to 1914. So I really don't know where to go with this. I'm kind of curious to see what you all think. Should I go with the brown, which is probably what the original color was? Or should I go with the black because that's what color it is underneath this ugly red paint? So I'm curious and I'd really like your opinion. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to help support my channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. Just go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash Lisa Dobo. I'd like to thank everyone that has helped to support my channel by going to buymeacoffee.com. It's uh, certainly very appreciated and, and it's what helps keep this channel afloat. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It's free to do so and it really does help my channel grow. Don't forget to hit that like button and please leave a comment and let me know what color should I actually do these window frames in. I'm totally confused as to what I should do. I'm sort of thinking I might have to do them brown. Also, tomorrow's the big day. I'm going to get them 3D scanned. So there'll be another video shortly to show you the process of how I'm recreating these 120-year-old windows, which is pretty cool. So, well, thank you very much for watching today. And once again, everyone, have the best day ever.